السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى سائر الأنبياء والمرسلين My brothers and sisters we are one week post the month of Ramadan and by now most of us would have begun to get settled into our routines as they were before the month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran awalam yatafakkaru fi anfusihim have they not reflected upon their own beings and so before this month of Ramadan becomes a thing of the past and it begun and it begins to leave our memories there are three things that i wanted to reflect on first the month of ramadan started and when the month of ramadan started along with it our efforts increased the time that we spent in the worship and ibadah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went up and 29 days later that month ended and when that month ended automatically the efforts that we were putting in or the time that we were putting in decreased that is normal that is natural in our calendar <coughs> there are times when these efforts go up like the month of ramadan the first 10 days of zul hajj and so on and it is not possible that we maintain this level of ibadah throughout the whole year but the thing that i want to reflect on is that when the month did start we did manage to put our efforts up it was possible in our normal routine we find it almost impossible to create time for the things that we did manage to create time for whether that is the night prayer whether that is finding time to sit and just make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever it is that we did more of we did manage to do it and this is one of the lessons to take forward to the rest of the year that we do have the time and the ability throughout the year to increase our efforts to form new habits <clears throat> and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a little bit more than we usually do the second point is that the decrease in some of the things that we did during this month will leave what's called a time vacuum the most obvious situation is with tarawih every day in the evening we created time in our schedule and we freed up this one hour to be able to come to the masjid if there were other things that we would normally be doing at this time we moved them to other times of the day sometimes we even slept during the day so that we are more fresh during the evening or the one hour before iftar when we would be tired so we would take time out to rest or take time out to prepare iftar or whatever it might be now this routine will have changed now this one hour that we freed up to come to the masjid will be empty and you'll be familiar with this uh, feeling and you'll be most familiar if you look back and think on the day of the last day of the month of ramadan uh, at the time of Maghrib, you would have had your iftar, Isha would have come, you might have prayed Isha at home, and then you would have sat down on your sofa and you would have thought, what do I do now? The question is, what will you fill that time up with? Because it won't be very long because before that time gets filled up by something, whatever that might be. My third point that I think is worth reflecting on although slightly indirectly is our relationship with food and our ability to control our desires shaitan comes to us in two main ways one 
is to put doubts in our minds. And the second is to tempt us with desires. We're very familiar with these tactics where shaitan puts waswasas in our minds and tempts us to do things that we know are haram. Sometimes we'll be sitting in a gathering and we might be talking ill of someone in particular and we get this realization that what we are doing is inappropriate and we should stop. But shaitan tempts us to continue in that gathering or to continue that conversation because maybe it allows us to fit in better. But when you are fasting, you are forced to hold tight your desires. You may be hungry and you want to eat something, but you don't. And you don't because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed you not to. But more importantly, because you want to do that which pleases Allah. And this is what you practice throughout this entire month. You put yourself in this position where you are going to be tempted by something. And you practice not giving in to that temptation. And it is this consciousness and this ability to control that temptation or to control that desire, whatever it might be, that Allah is getting you to become better at. And it is possible to do this outside the month of Ramadan, that is to control whatever desires they may be. Just how you did not eat when you were fasting, because that is what was pleasing to Allah, you can step away from conversations that are displeasing to Allah or avoid transactions in business that might be haram. Part of reflecting on these points is to look ahead at what we send forward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah O those of you who believe, fear Allah wal tandur nafsun ma qaddamat li ghad and let everyone look at what they are sending forward for tomorrow. So keeping in these three points in mind, there are a few things that I wanted to suggest that we can perhaps do going forward. One, think of the things that you have done and the habits that you have developed or habits that you may have given up during this month. It may be the frequency with which you came to the masjid. It may be that you altered your appearance. It may be that there is a dua that you learned or some adhkar that you were doing routinely and regularly. Or perhaps you gave up looking at things on the internet. Take one or two of these things and commit to them. Make it a commitment that these are the things that you will take forward for the rest of the year. Two, don't let the time vacuum that we talked about go to waste. It is a precious hour that you created for yourself. I can't tell you what to fill that up with, but think of what to fill it up with. Sooner or later it will get filled up with something else. So make use of it, even if it is just for the next few weeks or few months. And third, think of what you eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, kulu mimma fil ab halalan tayyiba. Eat from that which is from the earth, that which is halal and tayyib. Now we're very particular and focused on making sure that what we eat is halal. Checking the authority, checking the certificate. <coughs> But just because something is halal does not necessarily mean that it is tayyib, that it is good or pure. And given the demands of current farming, think, is what I am eating tayyib as well as halal? Umar radiallahu anhu said, take stock of yourselves before you are brought to account. Weigh yourselves before you are weighed, for that will make the reckoning easy for you tomorrow. So in the end, I'm going to leave you with this thought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as-siyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. 
which is that, O oh, you who believe, fasting has been made obligatory for you, just like it was made obligatory for the people before you, so that you may attain taqwa. Did you develop your level of taqwa? Have you gained anything from your fasting other than feeling hungry and thirsty? And are you more aware and conscious of Allah in your daily life? أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم